<clears throat> Welcome back to round one, the series where we play just the beginning of a game to give you a taste of what it's like. In today's episode, we'll be playing Court of the Dead Mourner's Call, a competitive two to four player area control game from Project Raygun and Sideshow Collectibles. In this game, players will represent mourners who are an allegiant of death himself, all of which are dedicated to pursuing and accomplishing his noble goal of ending the war in the underworld between heaven and hell and restoring balance to the universe. Players will strategically manipulate their influence amongst the three different factions of bone, flesh, and spirit, while also attempting to complete their own ulterior motives. You'll see every move and decision that we make, and after the dust settles, join us as we discuss the full experience to see who earned death's favor and a place amongst the elite of the underworld. Welcome back to round one. Tonight we have Court of the Dead Mourner's Call. This is from Sideshow Collectibles and Project Raygun, and it's a area control game. It's got a lot of things going on, but if you've never seen these collectibles from si Sideshow Collectibles, they make some really great statues, usually in other properties like Marvel, Star Wars, things like that, but this is their own original IP. That's right. We have Ryan. Myself, David, and guest Nate, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So we have basically done the setup for you, but we'll walk you through all the different components before we get into the actual gameplay. Mm -hmm. uh, first, the story. Yes. So the, the idea of the theme behind it is that heaven and hell are locked in this eternal ongoing combat, and death himself sees no end to it. So he creates his own court of the dead, which are his generals. And all these generals have mourners, which is what we represent in the game. We're trying to put an end to this eternal war. Yeah, we're <laughs> caught in the middle. Right. The game can last an X number of rounds, typically between three and four rounds. Uh, the game will end once all the unity tokens are collected by the players. These are the victory points that you're going to be getting at the end of the game in conjunction with some other type of things that you're going to be collecting points for. The number of unity tokens is dependent upon the number of players. In a four-player game, we have 35 uh, that are possible to grab. The game board itself is a representation of hell itself. All these are different locations in which we can send our guild members out to be able to collect different rewards from controlling those areas. So it is an area control game as well. Also, these there's two unique tracks on the side. It is not a cooperative game. However, we are trying to balance this war out. If we get too progressively far up these tracks, everybody gets mm -hmm. penalized from them. One of them is the celestial track, and one of them is the dreads grip track. Mm -hmm. There's another portion of area control in the game, and that's across the bottom called the Underworld Guilds. These represent the three different factions, which are bone, spirit, and flesh, and the six different types of figures in the game. So each of these different factions has two different types of figures. So that's an area control portion as well. So we're trying to have the most influence in these areas. Yeah, what's really cool about that is as you uh, recruit from these different factions, and you can recruit from all of them, even though you'll be allied with one of them, every time you do so, you're going to increase your presence in those tracks. Right. There is a Wallows deck. These are once per round cards that you're trying to complete by the end of that round. There's ways to get more of these. However, you're going to draw one of these per round. Basically, there are ways to be able to go to specific areas, have control in those areas, or have combat in those areas with the creatures of the underworld. Yeah, they add a lot of narrative flavor, in my opinion. You have missions you can go on. You can actually go to a certain place and have a, a battle with someone, or just objectives where you need some presence in these three territories and you're able to get, they get the do, reward. They do give you a lot of direction in a game yes. that has so many options, it kind of focuses your attention, which is nice. For each, sure. Each player also has a player board in front of them. This player board is going to show the three different factions. You're trying to move up each of these faction cards because they're worth victory points depending upon which column you end up at the end of the game. There's a place on the bottom to hold all of your figures before they get placed onto the board. You have a place for your Etheria. Etheria is kind of the energy within the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna use that Etheria to influence different things within the game. And you have a place to hold your unity and what faction you are. Now, at the start of the game, we're each going to draw three ulterior motive cards, one from each of the three different factions. And in secret, we pick one of those cards and we place that card face down. This is gonna serve a couple different purposes. Number one, it tells you an end game goal that only you know throughout the entire game, it's secret. The other thing is you're gonna place in secret the faction token of whatever faction you picked face down. Once everyone's picked their ulterior motive card, everyone flips it up. This is the faction that you're representing. You can have guild figures from any faction through the course of the game, but you do get some benefits from having a very specific faction. The other thing that happens in turn order, once you pick your faction card, 
you're gonna pick one of the starting mortar cards. The mortar cards are unique because they give you all kinds of special abilities through the course of the game. And again, in turn order, depending on the faction that you are, you get to pick from one of four different cards. These cards provide abilities, but they also provide you with a starting guild figure. I have someone from the, what is this name? This the is a Council weird of Osteomans. Exactly. So I'm gonna place this in my crypt because that's the card. This gives me a once per round ability. And then I mark this track across the bottom, giving me one presence in the Council of Osteomancy, and everyone does that in unison. All right. Hey, well, which faction? You're Bone Faction? I'm the Bone Faction, yeah. I chose Flesh, actually, for mine. I am Bone Faction as well. So we've got two Bone, and I chose Spirit, so we've got all the factions represented. Each player is also going to start with two Etheria. The last couple components we're going to talk about before we get into the game, the dice. The dice are used uh, sometimes for combat, not, not in the area control combat, but with some combat you might do with the Wallows cards. They're also used in a very specific step within the game. And the way that the, the game gets its name from, there's all of these giant tarot size cards. These all represent the different kinds of uh, generals within the game. You're going to draft these cards and then you're going to use them round mm -hmm. after round to be able to do special abilities. Yeah, you will get to know these guys because you use these same cards round after round, like Jeremy said, but you're going to be getting different ones. You're going to see some that synergize with some, some that you want to keep for your neighbor from getting, things like that. Right. All right, so we've already done the basic setup here. Let's talk about the steps in the game. We'll actually play through this first round to show you how the game is played. The very first thing that happens is we picked a starting player, and that was me. <laughs> and I get the death figure. The death figure is really cool because he does a couple of different things. Um, he makes you the first player, and he also breaks one tie in a specific location. So if I'm tied in one of these area control locations, I can break that in my favor just once per round or one of the areas in the guild across the bottom. Then the first player gets to roll an X number of dice. We have four players at the table, so we roll four dice. Mm -hmm. This is a contribution. Oh my goodness. Wow. I, you that know is what? A I should be able roll. to roll this in any game that I play, but that's not the case here. That is 23. 23. So we're going to throw 23 Ethereum. I'll let that's you count lot. there for a while. <laughs> uh, this is a uh, divide and choose portion of the game. As the starting player. Lots of moolah. As a starting as the starting player, I get to divide these into a number of different sectors. It's the number of players plus one. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I'm trying to do here is make them as even as possible in one way, but also not give one player too much of a benefit. So we have three, six, five, 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 and two. You know what? I'm gonna take one from each of these and do this. All right, I broke it up, but I get to pick last. So you get to pick any yeah, one of those stacks. Now, you guys can go around and I'll explain what this does. So you go ahead and pick, you'll pick, you'll pick, and then I'll pick last. Whatever is left over is gonna go into the Dirt Forge. And this is something that will be affected by the Celestial Suspicion track at the end of the round. We'll explain as we get there. Yeah. What are you gonna pick, Ryan? Well, I mean, I'm gonna take the five, because why not? Of course. Greedy. Yep, yeah. that's me. Well. And the round is young, so I will take yeah, also think, five. Think Let's I see. I believe I'm going to follow suit and take. I don't know uh, why I split it up. I should have <laughs> put five in the last one. I, you yeah. know what? That's math and me trying to explain something at the same time. Everything that's left over is going to go into the Dearth Forge, which is great for us as a group because there's a lot there to start at the very beginning of the game. All right. Once we're done with that, we each get to draw randomly one of those Wallace cards, these Wallace cards or quests that you're trying to complete. Mm -hmm. We've already dealt these out. Everyone has one of these. Um, that they can complete any time during their turn, bas basically during the action phase. Yeah, it is one of the actions that you can take. There's a number of actions you can take on your turn, uh, playing cards, making movements, and one of them is to complete that Wallows card. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to divide up the Court of the Dead cards. Now, again, depending upon the number of players that are participating, each player is going to be randomly dealt a next number of cards in a four-player game. Each player gets three, and there's going to be a stack of cards left over. And we're going to draft these. In round one, we're going to draft and pass to the left, and then round two to the right, and so forth until the game ends. So each player is going to pick one of their mm -hmm. cards and simply keep it face down in front of them, and they're going to pass them to their left. Like I said, you're going to be looking for some synergies oh, between yeah. these cards. Uh, but also, there are some nasty little cards in this game. And if you know players at the table who want to use nasty cards, <laughs> you might want to keep them from them. So give me Ogle Veil, as I can see your hands. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
All right, once everyone has their hand of cards, we actually go into the actual action phase of the game itself. Now, there's a variety of different actions. We'll explain the actions as we go, because I'm sure some of us will pick different actions through the course of the game. Mm -hmm. One of the actions is to play a Court of the Dead card, and I will lead off with Death himself. I'm already the first player, which means I'm going to retain first player. And I get to pick any one of these two actions, the top action or the bottom action. And I think for this guy, um, hmm. I'm going to take two actions in a row. I'm going to do the bottom part. I'm going to move down the Celestial track and the Dread Script track one. Which They're already at the bottom. Zero, so. I'm going to gain one of the victory points, because that's mm -hmm. what it says here. And then it says I get to take one additional action this mm. round. Mm -hmm. So I will go ahead and take another action, which means I will flip this over. I'm using my Mourner card. These Mourner cards are typically once per round. When you use them, you can either tap them or you can turn them upside down. This Mourner is called the Reaper Sheave, and it says that once per action phase, I can draw one Etheria into my pool unless I'm the Bone Faction, which I am, which lets me draw two. So nice. give me two of those. It's a lot of a theory to have at yeah. the start of the game. So we rolled really bad. well. I'm actually also going to play a court card as my first action. Um, this is Zial, the Great Osteomancer. So I lose an influence with the Bone Faction, but I do get to draw a Bone Faction card. You get to draw two. I get to draw two and pick, pick one. Pick one. Yep. So I'm going to choose this guy. He is from the Council of Osteomancy, so I get a Council figure. Again, one of the things is, just like the start of the game, anytime you take a Mourner card, they have an attached type of guild figure with them. You collect that guild figure and you put them into your crypt, and then you also affect the council down there moving up further to the right. Again, that's all area control down right. there as well, which yeah. gives you benefits. Um, so I drew this Mourner card, mm -hmm. which th my other Mourner says whenever I draw a Mourner card, I get one um, flesh oh. influence. So that's oh, great. Nice. However... This does also increase the Dread Script by one and gives me two Etheria. So if you could pass me two of that. I mean, we're going to run out of Etheria. I was going to say, it's mm. the same crazy thing. Crazy round. Well, it'll be a lot of uh, drafting then of, of soldiers. Yeah, what do you got, Nate? Let's see. I think uh, I'm going to go with um, Mortigal, who uh, will give me two influence in the bone track. Nice. You can always use influence, because influence is going to come into play when you start moving your guild and your faction members around the board. Mm -hmm. Your turn. I'm going to play Relic Ravlatch, and this is going to let me look at the top two Wallows cards and choose one to keep, and then I have to discard the other. So like Jeremy said at the beginning, we're all going to start each round with a Wallows card, but this is going to give me the opportunity to maybe uh, accomplish a couple different ones. And I will take this one, because it synergizes well. Nice. You know what? I'm going to do a recruit action. Am I the first one to do a recruit? Yeah. Yes. You so there's two different recruits. You can either recruit a guild figure directly onto your player or into your crypts, or you can recruit a mourner card for a little bit more Etheria. The only trick is you know exactly what you're drafting with, with yep. the guild card. This is, is potluck for the most part. So I'm going to spend five, which is how much it costs to recruit one. Mm -hmm. This just goes back into the pool. It also moves up the Dread Script track because you're making uh, more attention to Heaven and Hell. And give me two Bone Guys, if you will. Two Bone Guys, all right. I get to select one of these and, again, add whatever guild figure to my thing and affect the track down below. So you go ahead and go while I do this. Oh, you know what? I'm going to interrupt you. Oh, this okay. says any time I gain a Bone Guy this round, I get to roll a die and gain half that many on my nice. Influence track. So oh, nice. That was your Wallows card. So one. Well, that's, uh, Round it up, that's, so you that's get one. a whopping one. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't I roll my fives and sixes no before? No kidding. All right. I will pick. Uh, I mean, that worked Brian, out well for what, me. what are you going to do? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play uh, another court card, Gethsemane, the Queen of the Dead. This card comes at an Etheria cost, so I have to pay two. Thank so you for the night. if you wouldn't mind taking that from me. Yep. This gives me a bone card, so I draw two. Choose one. I'll take um, this guy here. Which, if you remember, whenever I draw a Mourner card, I gain one Flesh Influence, which is great. So I need another Council of Osteomancy figure, which is going to move me up right there. There you are, sir. Great. And again, I have to uh, some more abilities for this one. I'm also going to steal one um, Flesh from Influence from someone. Let's uh, let's steal it from Nate, actually. Let's pick on the new guy a little Flesh. Oh. Welcome to the group. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the yeah. sore a little bit. And this Welcome also Man, increases Hurts. the Dreads grip, so that's <laughs> going up. We're, uh, we're going to need to watch this a little bit. All right. All right, Nate, what's next for you? All right. So I am going to uh, play X-Rail. X-Rail? 
Um, and I'm going to uh, use it for its bottom ability where I will spend two resources of one type to go, or influence, to go up three of a different type. Oh, nice. Just a little exchange. Yes. All right. Well, I am not going to play a court card. I'm actually going to use one of my mourners, or my only mourner, actually. Long Grief and the Forlorn Choir. This one's going to, once per action phase, I may add a Etheria to the Dearth Forge. However, if I'm part of the Spirit Faction, which I am, I can add two to the Dearth Forge, plus that gets me one unity. I'm a big fan of simple engines that get me points, yeah, and that's why I chose that card. You're a big fan of victory points. Yes, I am yeah. a fan of victory I'm, points. I can get behind that. All right. Uh, I think Aragost is my choice here. All right, he's going to move up the Celestial Track 1. I get to select any player to contribute two Etheria to the pool, and you, you're sitting on three guys, so I'm going to make you contribute two. But okay. guess what? We both gain a victory point. All right. Boom. Now, we didn't mention this earlier, but we just put a bunch of Etheria into the Dearth Forge. Once we get to the Celestial Suspicion track at the end of the round, we're all going to be contributing. All of this in the Dearth Forge is really going to help us out as a group. That's right. I'm going to pay one um, bone influence and slide that guy down into that bottom location there, number five. Yep. There you go. Yeah, remember, we've been recruiting a lot of these guys, but they haven't gotten out onto the board until just now. Yeah, let's explain that real quick. You're the first person to move anybody out. To move people onto the board, you have to spend the type of faction influence of the people that you're moving out. He just moved a bone person, which means he has to move his bone faction down once. You have to do that for every single figure you move. And you can only move from one location to another. So you can't move a guy from here to here and a guy from over there to somewhere else. Right. You can when it comes back around to you, but not in one action. Mm -hmm. All right. I, will, I haven't been moving my characters because I've been saving my influence because I now have six bone influence. Oh, wow. Which allows me to recruit uh, one of the knights. Nice. Whoa, that's so a nice... night for orange. Oh, he just bumped up. That's not what I wanted to see. There's, All right. There's my wallows. Okay. All right. So I am going to... You know, Jeremy just mentioned that you have to spend influence to move unless you have this card. And that's Galavibre. I'm, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. She's I'm the eyes of the queen. Barbie. She's just say the eyes of the, the queen. The eyes of the queen. And she's going to let me... Comp complete a movement without any of that cost. So I'm going to take this person and move them right out here to this location, location eight. My guess is you have to be there for a quest. Perhaps, so it doesn't perhaps. doesn't make a whole lot of sense otherwise. All right, I will spend two bone influence to move my two guys to a Voxengard. Nice. Well, I am at the location I need to be to attempt my Wallows card. This is a battle with a Raycar that is attacking that specific location. So I am going to battle this creature, which means I take one of these dice and roll it. I need a, a 4, 5, or 6 to defeat it. However, I can use my Etheria to increase my die roll. And I get to use it after I roll, which is nice. So you're not really gambling. Nice. Roll a 1. Roll a 1. Let's, let's see what happens roll here. Boom! <laughs> you know what? I've got, I've got it. I'll spend the 3. Spend I'll spend the 3. I will beat it. Um, so I defeat the Drakkar, I get an, osteo. an Osteomancer, and the Dread Script goes down by one. Yeah, so there's a lot of ways to mitigate, I mean, especially with the Etheria, the dice rolling, and there's not a lot of dice chucking in this game. The combat's no. n very deterministic, mm -hmm. and yeah. the dice really come into play very little. Right. So right. I'm going to play Shard now. I'm going to Shard, um, I, which moves down on the... Um, Dread Script, Dread Script that's track. awesome. Great. Moves <laughs> up on the Celestial Track. You get a Unity, which again is a victory these. point. And then I get uh, an influence of my choice, so I'll, I'll take one of those. Oh, nice. Well done. Shard. Reclaim my missing flesh right. influence. All right. I am going to go ahead and recruit. I think it's about time. But I'm going to do it with a Mourner card. So I'm going to spend five Etheria. One Dreads Grip. One Dreads Grip goes up. And, and could I get two of the Spirit, please? Two Spirit. Two spirit. Yes, After all, can. that's how I roll we this game. Spirit. Uh, I am going to choose the Minder's Bind. All right. Add. So I need one what, of what these group, What faction is here. that? That is the Grave Dancer Circle? Yes. All right, I'm sorry, Nate. We're picking on the new guy. Aww. But I have to spend one bone faction to get rid of your knighthood guy permanently. Just take him out? 
He's oh, gone. Just taking Ooh. him right out. And the reason why I did that, I'm just going to explain to you guys right now. Unless he gets another guy, I'm going to break that tie because I have death. This, even though we're both This guy's one. the executioner, so I guess that yeah. doesn't make sense. Uncle Vale's mean. Feels bad. Should have drafted him. I. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to no spend a good guy out. So let's spend one spirit. Throw this guy out here. I feel like Ryan's cheating. He's got four dudes already and three more. Cards. Yeah, he uh, I do. I we'll drew. I drew. I uh, drafted two cards that both drew me mourner cards. That's true. Yeah. That's my fault. I shouldn't pass him to you. <laughs> All right. I my, take death, though. That's, yeah, that's. You can't not take death. My turn now. Um, so I will spend. Uh, I will spend three, actually. Oh, you're doing it, aren't you? <laughs> he's doing it. To take back my knight, <laughs> oh. and then moves up the dread's grip. <laughs> so that goes up more and more on the knight. Is, the yeah, morning's knight. He, now he wins it again, so I kind of wasted my turn. But yes, you could do the same thing. Keep it going. Keep the competition. Can't. But then he can't submit to the... You could recruit another. I could, you know. But All right, so things are... This for options are running out a little bit here, uh, but I am going to get this person out. Uh, onto the board. So I'm going to do a movement action. I'm going to take my influence on my spirit down one and bring this person out to the dearth forge. Nice. I'm passing. All right. Well, uh, so let me talk oh. about that real quick. So if you pass, yeah. you're not necessarily out of the round. The round ends when all four players pass in a row. Yeah. So I could come back in. You know what? Here's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to play my guy, uh, my last court card. It's Malavestros, um, the Fool. I get to deactivate one mourner card from each player. So you've only got one, so he deactivates. No. You've only got one, so he deactivates. Actually, mm -hmm. you've all only got one, only so go one. ahead and deactivate. Yeah. Learn right this now is a to mean not like card. Malavestros. Yeah. Right. No, he either deactivates cards or deactivates locations. So, so if you want to be a jerk like Ryan, is you choose that card and you punish everybody at the table. Right. Yeah. But that's part of this game, right? Yeah. yeah. Melavestros is also represented by a mini, so he can, as his yes. other option, go into an area and deactivate a yep. spot. Yep, yeah. onto the board. Uh, so for my um, action, I'm going to spend three more to further... Oh. oh, Nate's Locked building up an army. This, He's yeah. got a whole army yes, of knights right there. Yeah. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, so for my turn, I'm actually going to take a look at one of my Wallows cards. And I am going to, I'm going to do the fight as well. So I am in this location, eight. Roll a one. And I need to roll, I'm not rolling a one. It it worked, You're not going to win. I rolled it. I rolled four. a four. Yeah, four right. does good. it. So I defeat the Raker, I get two spirit influence, one, nice. two. And one down on the dreads grip. Very Remember, nice. Remember, you can always influence this with Etheria. So Etheria is used for a variety of different things. I'll take your Wallace card, game. David. All right. Um, I'm still in passing phase, so I pass. I'm going to spend one influence from the Flesh Faction and throw that guy out there. Okay. Save. I am going to spend one to move this guy out here. Mm. All right. Well, guess what? Mm. I have another Wallace card. another Wallace card. And I can do it. I have to have two of my guild members in at least two spirit locations, which I do. That's where I placed. And that is going to allow me to get this artifact, which is a cool Wallows card. This artifact is something that's going to be in front of me for the rest of the game. I gain two unity if anyone plays a shard court card. That was the, the lady game. that you already happen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I've got, I guess I've got a little bit more to go. So let's spend one, put this guy out here. All right. All right. So I'm going to spend one as well. And I will put this guy out uh, here. Interesting. I am going to play my last court card. And this is uh, Kayla Kill, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm going to use the bottom part. It's going to just get me two more spirit influence. I'm going to go heavy with that strategy. Nice. And I'll play a good round. I'm passing again. I am also passing at this point. And I will spend my last influence to go here. Wow. Nate's making some last minute moves here. Right. I'm going to pass. Is there anything else you can do? Yeah, I've got a theory, but I want to keep it. All right, I'll pass. I am not going to pass, actually. Let's go ahead and just spend this flush. I'll move my guy over to here. Okay. If Nate's going to take that spot, I'm just going to get out of there. Yep. Makes sense. I am taking that spot. So <sighs> I'll move my guy then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass. I pass. I, yeah, I got nothing left to do. I pass. And I'll pass. All right, so four more phases left in this round. The first one is the Dread Script threat. Now, this is kind of a heaven and hell's look at us affecting the board. As this marker moves up, it's going to tell us how many guild figures can remain in each of these locations. Fortunately, it's three. 
and we haven't broken that rule. However, if we did break the rule, a couple things happen. We have to roll a die for every single figure in those locations, even if they're just your figures. Yeah, it's not really a battle between your factions. It's no. just everyone has to survive or not. Yeah, right. survive the gods. So three different outcomes. One, if you roll a three through a six, nothing happens. You get to stay in that location and reap the benefits of it. If you roll a two, that figure is going to actually be bounced back to your personal crypt. Mm -hmm. If you roll a one, that's the worst thing. That's not good. You're going to lose your ring, put it back in your supply, and then this is going to go back to the guild figure supply. So we skipped that because nothing happens this round. We didn't make too much uh, dread script go around this round. So next one is the celestial suspicion. This is where everybody has to contribute. In addition, the Dearth Forge is also going to contribute the theory they have. Now, how much we have to contribute is affected by this track. Mm -hmm. This is telling us where this marker is. It's three plus the number of players at the So at seven the table. right now. But we have eight in here, which means that we don't have to contribute anything. We'll still be fine, except there's three different things that can happen here. Yeah. If you contribute the most, you gain three victory points, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. If you contribute anything at all but don't contribute the most, you get one victory point. If you contribute nothing, you lose a victory point, and you also have to lose one of your influence on one of your three tracks. So you want to contribute something. This is where Etheria comes into play the most. So everyone has to reveal mm -hmm. how much they have left. I, I have. I got two. Two. One. Two. Has three. So yeah. I can win this straight up. I'm, I'm sure he's going through. Yeah, so if Jeremy's going to win this, we might just bid one. Bid one, but yeah, we'll, well, see. we'll see. Three. I bid one. Why'd you bid two? two? I knew I you were going to bid three. Uh, you might not have bid two. Everything goes back to you supply. I gain three victory points. Ryan, you gain one. Yeah, I got one for contributing. All right, Thank so you. just get added. Remember, Thank your you. unity is actually the length of the game. Three so when that points. runs out, Thank it's you? gone. Yeah. All right, we've done both the tracks. Next, we have to resolve all these different locations. Every single location in the game has a number, and we will do these from lowest to highest mm -hmm. number. So the first one is the Dirt Forge. Whoever that is controls me. It, I control three. it, and I gain gain, gain three Etheria. Nice. Next here is orange. That's me. So you, Nate. Minus one on the Dread Grip. Yep. That's nice. Can one on choice. your influence track of your choice, a unity, and one up on the Celestial track. Now, if you're tied in any of these locations, no one wins. Mm -hmm. However, if you own a death, you get to break one tie and one tie only for that entire round. That's in any one of these locations or any of the Underworld Guild locations which we'll take care of in a moment. All right, you've done this one. Next, we go down here. Yeah, I get two different. So one here and one here. All right, over here, you gain a guild figure of your choice. Go ahead and put him in your crypt. All right, so we're going to raise... It's going to drop the Celestial. Or raise the Celestial. The Dread Script. Oh. All right. Here. here. Yep. 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 And then six, nothing. And four we skipped. Oh, we skipped four. Two of the same. Two of the same. There All we right. Go. Skip. Uh, six and seven. Six and no seven. one's there. Seven. Eight. I get one spirit influence for each spirit faction uh, piece out on the board or in the game. That's two. It's two right there. So I'm going to go up two more. I picked Voxen Guard up here, and it's plus one for every bone. We have Oof, nine man, bone. We all went bone, yeah. So I'm going to go up to nine. Dang. That's great. That is a lot of influence. I don't that think is. he's keeping that next and one. And then, meanwhile, <laughs> I get one for every flesh faction. Wow, there's I'll one of those. One. Enjoy that. All right. Nice. All right. This says to bounce back your yeah, guy. Yeah, I will do that. I'll bounce. This, this is optional, too, by the way, but I will bounce my guy back. You get to move this down mm -hmm. one. I get one spirit influence and one unity. And the celestial suspicion That's right. goes up. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to bounce this guy back. It so goes back down. So he's, he's got a balanced approach. And one more victory yeah. point. Yeah, I kind of balanced myself out there. That was so a nice grab of victory points, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are done with the map. Now we have to go down to the Underworld Guilds. And again, these will happen from left to right. Whoever is furthest right in each of these tracks. Yeah, well, these, again, represent the different types of we factions know in winning. the guilds. Yeah, that's, that's pretty apparent. <laughs> You're going to gain three Etheria from the first spot. The second spot, you get to gain two of your choice. Yeah, I'll, I will. I'll do that. One here and one here. And again, remember, your influence is your victory points at the end of the game. So mm -hmm. not only are you using it to move around and giving up victory points, but you're gaining it back mm -hmm. through control. The next spot is the Dreadsbane Order. No one's there this round, but this is an interesting thing. If you have that, you're going to get the Dreadsbane token. This basically makes you immune to the Dreads Grip threat when yeah, bad things happen over there. you can have as many figures. You know, 
but you can still trigger it yes. for other people to have to suffer, but you won't suffer the effect. That's pretty awesome. Grave Dancer Circle. I have that one. All so, right. so that's going to move the Dreads Grip down one yep, and one. gain one unity. The next nice. is a Conclave, which no one has, but mm -hmm. that would allow you to remove a figure from the board. The other one is to grab a guild figure. Yeah, I will. Uh, you know, I'm actually going to take one of those Dreadsbane Order figures, the, 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 green ones. Oh, the green ones. Yes, and you get guys. to put him onto your crypt, yep. and this is going to move you up to slot number there one. There we are, yep. All right, we are done resolving the locations and the guild. The next is the cleanup. Everyone who has turned over cards, thanks to Ryan, gets to now <sighs> yeah. flip these up yeah. to be and able to And some of these, used. if you had them active, will give you bonuses. I didn't. Like this guy gives me two uh, bone at the end of the Yeah, I phase. had one that would have given me something during cleanup, but you flipped it over. All of your theory is going to stay. All your markers are going to stay. All your guys on the board are going to stay. And you're simply going to start a new round with the player who is uh, in charge of death. Mm -hmm. You're going to go through that multiple times until all of the unity tokens have been distributed to the players. Yeah. So we'll finish up the game and we'll come back on the couch. Yeah, leave a comment who you think is going to win. Yeah, we're going to yeah. add things up. We'll let you know who won. It's not going to be Nate. No. <laughs> uh, we're going to we'll definitely know, let you know who lost. Uh, but we'll do all that on the couches and tell you what our whole experience was like. Catch you guys soon. So welcome back. We are not at the table anymore, uh, but we did play the rest of the game. And I'll just say right now, I'm sorry to say, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did you lose, but you came in last place. I did. No, that's what yeah, I mean. You that lost. is losing. That yeah, is losing lost in the worst place. Anything north of last for me is a win. I don't know. <laughs> Second place is last place for me. <laughs> so this is unique. We we played this game. Nate, yeah. this is your first experience. Yeah. But yeah. the first game we played was three, almost four rounds. This was two rounds. Two like, rounds. We burned through yeah, those we, unity we, tokens we, really we, quick. I think a lot of people had combos that were getting unity tokens. And we hit that... Uh, script mm -hmm. every time and we got in a four player game you're giving out a ton of victory points for that yeah it brings up a really interesting point about this game is because it can it, for the kind of game it is it's about the fastest area control game with a lot of things going on that I've ever played it's deceiving because when you first play these type of games like your blood rages and your rising suns like those are like two hour affairs to get through you would think the same when you're playing this game, but it's fast. I mean, it is lightning fast when you play it. Yeah, I and think. I would say if it plays, even if it plays three rounds, which I'm guessing is probably the average, mm -hmm. I can't imagine it going over four. Mm, no. But let's say it plays two, three, or four rounds. All the things that you do at any given uh, at the end of any given round, those are only going to happen like twice, maybe yeah. three times. Right. So you can't like round up the scoring, oh, okay, next time I'll do this, and then maybe I'll score this many points, and then the next round, and the next round. It's only going to happen once or twice, or think, twice yeah. or three that, times. That puts it right along some of the more popular games out, like like Blood Rage is only three rounds, and mm -hmm. Rising Sun is only three rounds. So this fits in nicely. You could yep. kind of slow play this game out, and you can make it go into four rounds if you, like, maybe you want to get your engine going a little better, but two to three rounds is probably what you're going to see. I think part of what, what helped us score so quickly was that everyone had presence on the board, yeah, like distributed all across the board. Yeah, there wasn't like, a lot of conflict, and right? Like, like in Blood Rage, for example, usually you don't have every area claimed right away, and then you move in when the attacks are happening or when the rec, when the you know you're rec, harvesting yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But in here, it's like everyone's getting something at the end of the round. And yeah, we played nice, I guess, a little yeah. bit in the first round because at the end of the first round, we weren't even setting off the dreads grip. No, that's which true. can be different. That was very different in the right. first. In our three-player game, we, game, we were we were tied. There were some like well, there was a round where I don't think we really activated any spaces because everyone was tied. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to let anybody get anything. We were a little friendlier. Yeah, the cool thing time. you have to remember about the way the dreads grip works is before you activate all the different locations and their benefits, that dread dri dreads grip is going to fire off. So you could potentially just send one little guy into an area where and you create have havoc. three and create havoc. Right. Create havoc and potentially walk away with the being the person yeah. that gets the benefit. Yeah. You and can't that, talk about the dreads does. grip around me right now. No, <laughs> me, me I'm neither. I'm gonna have nightmares about the two ones double that ones. I rolled during that game. Double ones. Yeah. I rolled lost ones both the same my time. guys. I swung the balance on the one Couldn't of the. Couldn't believe that I lost two guys right there. Yeah, yeah. I man, you got to put that in context. So the <laughs> dreads grip is cool. You guys were in positions to win spots, yeah. and yep. you just with bad rolls. In, in that case, you lost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I could have lost one guy. Be okay, some but exciting moments for sure. Yeah, I love the mourners cards. Like I, yeah. we, we've played with the stack of it. We know that uh, we probably know that there's going to be more with stretch goals with mm -hmm. the Kickstarter. But those really make the game because they're so variable in the way that they interact with your turn. Because they basically are 
Most of them are basically actions that you can flip over to do something. Or end of turn benefits that might combo with right. each other. Yeah. yeah, they add a lot of flavor. I also think the Wallows cards, for me, add a lot of flavor because uh, of anything in the game, I think the Wallows cards offers a lot of world building for this universe that I'm not really familiar with. Mm -hmm. But all of those feel like, okay, okay, there's something going on in this territory, so I have to get to that territory. I'm going to fight this thing. It, it makes it feel like there's a little bit more of a narrative. Mm -hmm. Gives you a little focus, those. too, well, to, that, to target something. You definitely. Need. I get totally focused on those Wallows yeah. cards. I couldn't like 12, not do those. There's like 12 locations, and you kind of look at the board, you're like, uh, I don't know <laughs> what I want to do. But if you have a card that says, go to this location, you're like, oh, okay, I'll just go there. That yeah, brings so. up, a, you make a good point, too, about, about the, the IP itself. I think most people playing this game aren't going to be familiar with it. But I think the Mourner cards and the way that the court cards play out mm -hmm. really brings you gradually into this universe in, in a way that things make sense. Like the Executioner guy kills somebody on the board. The Spirit Guide increases your spirit track. Like it kind of, yeah. kind of pairs well mechanically. There, there's two things I noticed too the second time around, how important Etheria is in the game. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't realize like... The die roll at the very beginning of the round may sound insignificant, but it really influences the way that you play your round. Because yeah. if you don't have a lot of it, you're not going to be moving people around the board at will and introducing new characters in or even recruiting more mourners or recruiting new guild figures. But also, for me, it was really important at the end of the round, too, because I was able to win those bids for the Celestial Track and gain three victory points every single time. Right. Yeah, yeah, that was, was a difference. Which was awesome. The first round that you guys saw, we had, what, 23 yeah. Ethereum? Yeah, it was a monster roll. 20, 23 get. Ethereum, and I think in the second one we had maybe 15, which you didn't see. Yeah. That makes a big difference. Yeah, there a was only difference. A, a few Ethereum in the in each I think we each got three. Yeah. Yeah, and we each got three, so mm -hmm. it was a very different game that played out that and way. And it affected like how much we could recruit new members into our yeah. armies and, and get new um, mourners and yeah, uh, affected the whole It's kind of weird, and it is super swingy in that you can go anywhere from 4 to 18 Ethereum on that roll in a four-player game. Oh, could you imagine rolling four? Player, four? 24. Yeah, <laughs> oh, 24, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. And, and I think you'd think, like, oh, that's that's huge, like a huge difference, but it just changes the way you play the game drastically. Absolutely. And not it, it's not necessarily punishing to roll... Low numbers. Well, everyone's affected everyone's by it. Right. Everyone's yeah. affected equally, and it just means you have to play a little different strategy that round. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to change things up quite a bit because it, like you, it would really affect your ability to get more in cards. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'd have to maybe change yeah. up and just take a faction, uh, you know, one of the units instead of a more. And I think that's why our game, probably a good reason why our game went two rounds, is we did have that crazy roll on the first yeah. round, so we were just basking in in yeah, and it was scary so to do so. it was yeah. in retrospect i like my ulterior motive was um i got four points for every spirit mourner card that mm. i'd had at the end and i got a little sidetracked at times i could have probably bought at least one more in the game i know there was a moment that i could have and i decided not to uh, no, I may have foregone some other points there, but it might have been another four points for me. And we haven't co covered the scores, right? Like you no. had 35, mm -hmm. 33, 31, I had 31 so and I had 29. Nate actually, new guy won this. New guy this won. Guy. Last time you'll be seeing Nate on the show. <laughs> um, no, but what's really cool about that is uh, we scored a lot of points a lot of different ways, yeah. and we were all within two of each other. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a big spread there, which was yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Like, what, six points from last to first? Because you, like you got, like, four mourners, right? You had like I had four, four mourners, five. but un unfortunately, I they were just so drastically different yeah. that I couldn't really get a synergy going between my four yeah. cards, which last game we played, I think I had four or five that just worked perfectly together. so well together. And I won yeah. the first game because I was able to combo those. But yeah. I had one, in contrast. you know, I was right. Yeah, you only had one mourner. Bare bones, like just getting a bunch of soldiers out. So that's all the I The other thing I'll mention, two things I'll mention. One, you were mentioning the ulterior motive uh, that you're trying to get. There's just like in-game victory points. I like those carrots. Like, I think there's enough carrots oh, yeah. in this game where you're trying to complete stuff, but you see someone taking advantage of something that's really useful, so it leads you to direct conflict with those players. Yeah. The other thing I really like about this game is that at the end of the round, it's really about positioning to get into those locations on oh, the map yeah. and on the guild. So it's really cool that there's a, a very hard dichotomy between the victory points that you're saving up on those tracks, because those are a huge mm -hmm. amount of victory points, especially as you scale up further to the right, but also giving up your victory points to be able to get into positions to get 
like very small benefits, but you have to kind of math it out in your head to say, if I give up this many victory points, what am I really gaining from it? And that's a cool aspect of the game that I like. Well, and that brings up another point for me, the choices that you make in the game. Starting with the court cards, which are double use, you know, you can use mm -hmm. the top action or the bottom action. Mm -hmm. But there's just a lot of opportunities throughout the game to make tough decisions. One of the cards, one of the court cards I found interesting, you used, or who used Malavestros? You did. I did. Mm -hmm. In the first round that everyone saw, uh, you used it to shut down mourner cards. I had it in the next round, and I used it to shut down a location yeah, oh, that Jeremy that had abused in the first round. Mm -hmm. Jeremy was there in the second round, and Ryan took a bunch of his guys there. I placed the Malavestros uh, to uh, figure there. It basically shut that down so if anyone won it, no one's going to get the benefit. So then everyone evacuated, which... Spawned a couple more war zones in different areas. It spawned more yeah. war zones. These guys had to spend some influence to move mm -hmm. out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's an interesting uh, choice that you have to make for just about everything. And the last thing I'll say, too, was I was very concerned the first time we played the game about the Dreadsbane token because how powerful it was. And even death, how powerful they were. This game, I had death the entire game. It didn't affect the outcome once. You didn't have tiebreakers. And Because yeah, right? I and, avoided you. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then the Dreadsbane token never took effect nobody this game. Even, so nobody even went down It was one track. of my early mm -hmm. concerns, and this game it didn't get affected at all, so, which yeah. is great. It means yeah. there's balance within the game. I think you're going to find games where people abuse that token, and that's If it comes happen. into play, again, yeah. it's all about mm -hmm. what happens in positioning right. yourself that round. The dice could be weird one round, and it affects your game completely, but it affects everybody at the table. Well, and mm -hmm. you have to change things up. Like I've said before, you can't let someone abuse things in this game. No. If someone gets something going... You can't just play your own little game in a game like this. I mean, that yeah. goes without saying with these types of games. But yeah. This one in particular. If someone abused something in the first round, you cannot let them do that in the second round. You All have right. to put forth some effort to stop them. When you them. see somebody's, like, engine running, and yeah. you realize they're pulling in a ton of those Unity, it's like... Well, and they're quick engines, too. These yeah. are not long engines. The game's two to three rounds. Mm -hmm. So if someone gets a little engine going, and it's like, whoa, what's going on there? You can't get to it later you've got to do something mm -hmm. about it now yep and i, I also liked how the, there's a freedom of movement like it wasn't punishing to to move like the last round we we spat, spent like a four or five go arounds with everyone just kind of moving pieces around on the board that it is really an interesting isn't that painful to do it, no it's yeah. not it painful. but you're still spending victory points right. to move yeah. which yeah. To it's that. something you have to decide am i like you drop i think at one point from like 10 to six to three yeah. so if you're about to drop from ten to six right. it's like is it, am i going to get four victory right? points out of this move yeah. so suffice it to say we all had a really exciting time playing the game it was a lot of fun and amazingly close i yeah. mean like i said 35 33 31. 31 29 it's a really tight game considering all the things that you're doing in this thing mm -hmm. we had a lot of fun so that was court of the dead mourners call this is from project ray gun sideshow collectibles Remember about the contest. We're going to be giving away one of these statues uh, to someone who comments yeah. uh, somehow. Yep. And uh, check us out next time.